Do you have two million pounds? Um, it's nearly finished, but not there, but externally infrastructure. But I think they've gone for the wrong resi split. I think if you are gonna put something like that right up against the railway for commuters, because the station's literally just down the road. A mispriced GDV, let's say the GDV is, I don't know, for argument's sake, 2.2, 2.3. There's just nothing in this deal for someone coming in. At what is the value? Far less than the two million. So okay. let's say 1.4, 1.5. You know, looking at, as Jay said, you know, it's a nice area. Do you have two million pounds? Do you want six houses in Westcliff on Sea? Well, you're going to find out why you can buy something like this at auction. What price discovery is? We've got Natalie with us today. Uh, and we're also going to be talking about how difficult sites are to develop, how difficult sites are to exit and a whole host of other things. So if you are new to development or you're just interested in finding out why people sell properties at auction and why receivers sell property at auction, then this episode is for you. We are back with Property Auction Hunters and today we have special guest Natalie Shaw with us. Welcome, Natalie. Thanks so much. It's amazing to have you. So Natalie, 25 years of investment banking, clearly that's given you a lot of transferable skills and now professional property investor. So uh, yeah, welcome on the show. Thank you so much. Brilliant. So today we start with a £2 million guy price property in Allsop's auction. It's a part finished development of six houses. Uh, it's in Westcliff on Sea. Um, this just had so many different talking points for today. And I thought this is a great, great lot for everyone to kind of talk about and just go through. But just so everyone knows, so it's basically a part finished development on the edge of a railway. Um, so you've actually got uh, five uh, sort of houses and then a one, a one three bed house as well. So I think it's five by four bed house and one by three bed house. Um, although something in the legal says something different, which I'll come on to. Um, it's nearly finished, but not there, but externally infrastructure wise, it's, it's basically all done to, uh, basically it's, it's watertight and weatherproof but it's now being sold by receivers. So effectively someone's basically not finished it off, gone bust. Right, so Jay, do you wanna kick us off on this one? What do you think? So yeah, so uh, I the first time you put this in, uh, in the chat uh, for us to go through it, I thought, what is he, what, what's going on here? <laughs> um, first of all, I mean, uh, for, for myself and Piot, uh, not doing a development is high up on our list of things that we really don't wanna do. And beyond that is finishing off someone else's development, yeah. which is got to be the worst. It has to be the worst. Mm. Um, now, like you say, it's it's right and tight, but you can see that most of the flooring isn't down. They've gone for underfloor heating in some of the internal images that are online. Um, that kind of stuff worries me. The other thing that worries me is I think um, they've gone for the wrong, I mean, residential there doesn't make the greatest amount of sense to me personally, but I think they've gone for the wrong resi split. I think if you are gonna put something like that right up against the railway for commuters, because the station's literally just down the road, you'd go flats. Mm. I think executive style four bedroom houses um, with with parking and all this stuff with no garden, no amenities for a family that you try and squeeze into a four bedroom house just feels like someone has been really poorly advised because they would have got a greater yield on flats. Um, outside of that, Westcliff on Sea is a lovely area. You look at some of the high rise flats there, or well not high rise, but beach facing flats with the panoramic views, you're looking at two million pounds for one of those Yeah, that are really very nice. Um, so do I think that you're gonna be able to sell those houses for four or 500,000 pounds a piece? I do not, um, but it's a modern design. I think it's been intelligently done. You can see someone's put some real money into that because uh, you go onto the legal pack and you look at the drawings, they've gone for the seeded roofing. They've Lots of effort's gone into this. Yeah. I think a lot of it is misplaced. And I think the one thing that sticks out to me is the fact that they got it to that point deserves a lot of respect because building that close to the train lines on what I would imagine is a very constricted site for development, not a developer, wouldn't know, but I look at that and I think the volume of issues there are insurmountable for my tiny little brain to comprehend. So well done for getting it to that point. Bad luck on getting uh, repossessed. What is the value? Far less than the two million, personal opinion. Natalie, go over to you. 
Yeah, I totally agree with that. I mean, if you, you look online, you can see where they've actually tried to sell the units off plan. Mm. And clearly, they haven't been able to sell them at that price. And therefore, it's, um you know, they've had to go into receivership. So what, what price did they put them up? 450 yeah. starting. Okay. So they were 450 for the three bed, I think, up to 500. I couldn't find too many more details. But that would give a GDV of like 2.7 for the development. So if that's a mispriced GDV, let's say the GDV is... I don't know, for argument's sake, 2.2, 2.3, there's just nothing in this deal for someone coming in at the 2 million mark. Yeah. So I, I just don't, I don't see it selling personally. But um, I also agree with Jay in that if they were running out of money and they knew they were running out of money, you never know what corners they cut in the last sort of three to six months of the build. Mm. That would really scare me. And, you know, as not really as a builder, you know, it really needs a builder to come in and have a look at that and see whether it was actually done to the standard it looks like it was intended. So do you think it's going to sell or not? I don't think so. I, I think two million is too high. Maybe it's price discovery um, by the uh, by the lender. You know, this is the bridging financing, financing selling. So maybe it's price discovery, but I think it will have to sell much below this. What, what would you pay for it? So I know obviously it's not necessarily something you'd want to take on or necessarily something we'd want to take on, but everything's worth something, right, to someone. What would you pay for it where you'd be comfortable to buy that? Oh, I'm I'm in the sort of mid one. So let's okay. say 1.4, 1.5, you know, looking at, as Jay said, you know, it's a nice area. So if you see yourself as having another sort of two, three hundred thousand to finish it off. I don't know, that's a ballpark. Um, you know, you kind of want to get a good twenty percent on top of that. Makes sense. So that's kind of where I'd be looking. But again, this is like too many red flags for me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Interesting. Um, there's uh, like so many two things to talk about in this development because uh, number one, I applaud whoever took this site from a car wash site six years ago, five years ago, to have a vision to create something like that so close to the train tracks on such a tiny site to actually build six houses there. It's actually commendable. Yeah. Um, and uh, I don't think those are great quality. It's not great quality living accommodation because mm -hmm. of the proximity to the trail tracks and lack of amenity space uh, even though the internal finish looks really good mm -hmm. i don't think it's such a it's a great product um to to sell uh but i think there are other ways of looking at this it's not great executive house but it's a big massive product to, to actually build eight thousand eight hundred square feet of space mm -hmm in such a constricted kind of area with all the engineering required, I think that's cost about 1.8 million. Mm. So clearly this is worth something. It's mm -hmm. not a worthless site. And it's you get six houses at the end of the day. And there are ways of playing this. I'm sure there'll be like housing associations or maybe uh, operators who basically would optimize the site for renting rather than selling. And they would actually make money from this uh, even if they buy it 2 million. But I don't think it's worth two million in the auction. I think this is something like one and a half million, one point six million kind of site. Yeah. I think it's gonna go unsold and someone's gonna pick it up post auction on a better deal. But like Natalie just pointed out, this is being sold by mortgages and they just trying to do what's best for the deal, mm -hmm. what's they're advised on, and they probably will sell it below that two million. Makes sense. Yeah, I mean, just to point out, so it was a car wash previously, as uh, Natalie with her notes, uh, yeah. pages of notes uh, came in and, and kind of discovered. So it was a car wash, but this is typically why development shouldn't be done everywhere. Just because something looks cheap or something's available, because some things have a negative land value as well. And you, that's what you've got to think mm -hmm. about is how much am I spending, but also what's the desirability of that purchase for someone? Um, I agree. I think housing association is probably where we'll end up with. But the only problem that I find with this is I feel like the developer's been way over leveraged. So I feel like the developer is in for at least two million pound here. I don't think it's price discovery. I think they need that money back. And it's just then a case of 
how long is it going to take for them to start thinking I'm going to have to take a haircut on the debt that I've basically got out here? Could be six months, could be 12 months, could be 24 months. It's, mm. But the, the longer that goes on, the more fees, more interest, everything's adding mm. up. So actually, there's going to have to be some cut-off point where they have to make a decision as to do we try and look at getting 1.8 back, 1.9, or do we try and just continue to try and find yeah. that unicorn buyer for this, right? But I don't think their lenders are at uh, anywhere close to 2 million. I think that would be at, say, about 1.3, 1.4. Because uh, even if they start with all their costs, it the the the, the cost were well, say two point two million, they would only lend like seventy percent. Yeah, they, they need to have some head height on, 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 on their debt. Stuff, I, I but, agree, but uh, but I also think yes, you know, we looked at it from a point of view of per square meter. If you say two thousand pounds square meter for a build, it's going to be around one point eight. But I also think how much have they bought that site for? Car washes yeah. are quite valuable sites nowadays, mm, yeah. just from a commercial point of view and income point of view. So I feel like the over leverage element is not just coming from a build perspective, but also from yeah. a purchase of the site yeah. perspective. Um, and how much interest have they paid on this site so far? Yeah. And the costs of actually being repossessed are huge. Like I think the cost of receivers just being appointed is about 30,000 mm. pounds. Uh, and then the extra penalty interest and everything else, it's huge. And the, sorry. No, I think if you, if you look at, what they were estimating the GDV at, so let's say that's 2.7, 2.8, I don't think 2 million lending against that is un, un, um, untenable. Mm. So I just think it's been, the, the GDV has been mispriced. Yeah. Um, I mean, I suppose they looked at the fact, it is actually close to the sea. You can actually walk down the street and you're right on a beautiful beach on the sea. So it's a good location as long as you don't look behind you, like yeah. literally one meter behind your um, your back close door close to the sea close to the, the train tracks yeah. <laughs> um, they do have garages which I think is is you know uh, a, mm. a sort of uh, positive and you know nice spec but no I still think the, the GDV is being mispriced well yeah. I, I think they could have done themselves a massive favour there, there are six units here all of them are part completed. Now they would have known within six months that they were running dry. Mm -hmm. So they should have just turned around and said, right, let's get two completed to final spec, show home one, get the other one ready, get these two sold off, release some of that debt slash equity, reduce the lending, make the lender happy in terms of a risk reward mm -hmm. value thing. Because sometimes these things that they don't go into receivership straight away. The receiver's like, well, actually, the, the lender will go, actually, it looks like you're coming to the final end. If, if we can keep it out of receivership, actually, the viability of the deal mm. stays the same. It's not ideal for lenders to push things into receivership. It, this is You forgot lenders don't use common sense. <laughs> That's the problem sometimes. I think we may, we may have typecasted somewhat <laughs> aggressively there, say. But but yeah, I mean, if, if, you're, if you're not an underwriter, if you're looking at actually where your your debt book sits and you have something like this sitting on there and you go to the site and you see actually there's six ones here uh two of them are 60 percent done two of them are 80 percent done one of them is 90 95 you'll go actually well look you've got six months get the two that are 90 to 95 percent done done get them listed get them sold we will give you the breathing space to achieve that that means you can pay down your loan out of those two sales you get none of that money that pays down the loan then you get more breathing space to complete the other four units but look, on on the comment i've said it for a reason i've had a case literally last week where vendor called us up he's got a first charge a second charge and another kind of outstanding debt as well We've agreed to clear all of that. So all of that, 140 mm -hmm. grand. The first uh, charge lender is Santander. Um, this is literally two days before we got repossessed. We emailed them to say, we've just exchanged contracts, et cetera. Um, they, re they still went ahead, they repossessed. And then we, we contacted them through AMG, asset managers. And we said, look, we can clear all your debt, all the debt that he's owed. And he's happy to sell it to us and walk away without getting repossessed. And they said, no, we have to go to the market with it. And, and this is a problem with they're not using common sense nowadays. Mm. And partly it's down to the fact that once they've repossessed, it goes to asset managers. Asset managers want to earn more money. So they want to prolong the whole process. So once it goes to asset managers, yeah. there's no more That's conversation. Because yeah. their, their fees are terrible as asset managers. Exactly. So on, on a by the by, but actually the longer they hold it, the more they asset manage it, the better the fees are. But this is a product of the last financial crash, history lesson for everybody. Um, because if something was being repossessed, the banks had um, direct contacts with agents. Yeah, It would just go straight onto the market and the agent could 
sell it to their brother, sister, whoever, for whatever the debt level was. All of that stuff changed in 2009. So it has to go through these um, separate independent companies, these corporations that make sure that best value is achieved over arms a length. period of time. Arms length transactions. Um, so you're seeing a lot of that. But whilst it doesn't make sense on the flip side for the deal, it makes sense in terms of protecting the bank's interest and the vendor's interest, or at least that's what it's designed to be doing. Yeah. Brilliant. So we're well, not surprised I've... that it's been repossessed and we're not yeah. surprised that it's not going to sell. And none of us would offer two million. No. no. The other interesting thing on this one, a little bit of digging, the name of the developer, it's a company name, and we cannot find that company name anywhere. No. It doesn't exist. Yeah, For us, I mean, up. if someone else finds it, then let us know yeah. in the comments, but we, we haven't been able to locate mm. it. Because if you look at the building certificate, it's in Black Rock's development, yeah, yeah. which you can't find. Black Rock development, you can only find in two separate words. It's, yeah, doesn't exist. Okay. So drop some comments below. Sell or no sell? What do you think? And I'll be interested to hear. We always love hearing about what everyone else has in mind. What would you think you would do with it? What do you think someone else is going to be buying it for? Mm. So drop some comments in. Brilliant. Excellent. Okay, so the results are in for this property and uh, two hours surprise this property sold. And it sold for two million and sixty five thousand pounds. We don't know who bought this property and uh, we know that they have to obviously complete the development. And uh, we are quite curious about the identity of the purchaser, whether it was a housing association, whether it was a private buyer, whether it was a developer who thinks this development is worth way more than our prediction of 2.2 2.3 million so if you know who bought this let us know we would be very interested to uh to find out and tell us what you think about this purchase is it worth 2 million 65 thousand pounds or is it not and uh also for the future make sure you subscribe to this channel and uh, follow us for more videos like this